You do and the sacrifices you make that give me the freedom to do what I love to do, which is perform for all these beautiful people. So I will not thank you guys. All I do remember is I had to do what I was told. Um, I was told I was fat every day. I had to go to the gym. I had to just, and um, I'd never remember feeling so demoralized and just, they made me feel like nothing. And I went along with it because I was scared. I was scared and fearful. I didn't even really do anything. I couldn't go where I wanted to go. I couldn't have the nannies that I wanted to have. I couldn't have cash. Um, and it was just demoralizing. There's a lot that people don't know about me that I want them to know. I never wanted to become one of those prisoner people. I always wanted to feel free and get in my car and go and not let people make me feel like I had to stay in my home. So I was kind of like in this conspiracy thing of people claiming and like treating me like a superstar, but yet they treated me like nothing. They're hearing what they want to hear. They're not really listening to what I'm telling them. It's like, it's bad. I think the main thing I do remember when it was started was my dad's control. He loved to control everything I did. I remember the first day he said, I'm Britney Spears and I'm calling the shots. And I'm like, alrighty then. Um, I'll You've had a year that would test a lot of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If I really wanted to, I could still be a young woman and do something completely different and have a whole new career and still have a career and still have hopefully a, a, my whole life ahead of me. But you could say the same thing about someone like Britney Spears. Absolutely. There's only three months age difference between you and Britney. Absolutely. And look at the difference. Complete disaster. Well, I mean, people handle different things differently, and thank God I've been, you know, surrounded by honesty, and thank God I've chosen to, to still be around people that I trust. And it's really difficult when you're a celebrity to know the difference. But my parents never told me what I had to do. I'm fortunate that they're so talented. My mother's a great stylist, and my father's a great manager. They don't take me for granted, and I don't take them for granted. They're the most important thing to me because when all of this is full, when the soul is full, I'm so thankful. I try not to cry. I'm thankful to be alive. I'm thankful to be on the stage. I'm thankful for my beautiful father who's here tonight. I thank you for his sacrifice, for his pain. I'm thankful for my mother. The rise of the two most famous pop stars are one for the books. With each cultivating year, they manage to become the blueprint of true superstardom in every element. The image of a perfect pop star has managed to maintain their fandom and longevity decades later. Although the ladies grew up and had different careers, their rise is relatively the same. The only true thing that separates them apart is their foundation. How one was able to stay grounded and continue to succeed all these years later and how the other's foundation ultimately led to their own demise. This is a tale of two pop stars, Britney and Beyonce, and how your family will either continue to make or break you and your career. If you really look at it, the rise of Beyonce and Britney is one and the same. Both ladies had a common goal for what they saw and envisioned for themselves. 
As little girls, they both performed and did pageants. Brittany got a taste of the pageant life becoming a local celebrity in her hometown of Louisiana at just three years old, and her mom would parade her around and invest in dance classes allowing her to perform at local talent competitions to boost her confidence and hopefully get her known more around Louisiana. She got her first big break doing Star Search at just 10 years old, ultimately losing the competition, but soon getting a position that would soon change her life. Beyonce was a local celebrity competing in beauty pageants at 8 and also local talent shows. Beyonce sang in the Baby Junior category featuring children under the age of 7 and won the 1989 Sammy Award for Female Pop Vocalist. She began taking dance classes and by the age of 9 she had formed her first vocal group Girls Time and competed on Star Search, also losing the competition. The formation of Girls Time and Destiny's Child was a starting point that helped Beyonce develop her career as an artist. Britney being selected to be a part of Musketeers with powerhouses like Justin Timberlake and Christina Aguilera was really the foundation that drove Britney to become the biggest pop star once she went solo. Having long work days and spending hours rehearsing and memorizing songs, both ladies spent their childhood singing, dancing, and learning routines. Developing their voices and above everything, igniting a passion for the performing arts. With Britney, people expected from her, but nobody would predict how big she'd become. At 15, Britney sang a demo tape singing to Whitney Houston that Larry Rudolph, her then entertainment manager, sent to Jive Records. Landing her a record deal, she was sent to Sweden to work with producer Max Martin. Everyone knows that Britney's singing voice isn't her regular singing voice. Britney has more of a powerhouse deep vocals and they made her switch to the baby voice to stand out. And when she released her first single, she had the other girls scrambling. In 1998, Baby One More Time reached number one on the US Billboard 200 and was certified two times platinum by the RIA after a month. The song is deemed a classic. Its impact on pop culture is undeniable, especially for it being her first single. It was a solidification that nobody really saw coming. The music video became somewhat of a pop bible stamp for teen pop stars and her marketing was relatively genius. Britney was considered PG enough for children, but also sexy enough to play on fantasy. Everything about the video is memorable from the way she was singing to dancing in a courtyard to the basketball court. It's been parodied and mimicked. This single, followed by the others, became the standard of a pop princess that others wanted to duplicate, but you can't outbreak the first. When she performed, it was captivating and had people engaged. She would put on full-fledged performances and have people at all. Her days at Masketeers really helped her development on stage. Beyonce, in both stages of her life, Destiny's Child and when she hit her solo career, had an amazing stage presence along with her DC members. A little known fact that DC was made to excel Beyonce's career and she's upheld that status. She was the breakout star that people looked out for and knew that was up next. In 1998, their first number one single for DC was No No No, which whispers classy R&B. The song is slow and sexy. All the girls looked beautiful and embodied the sultry aura that was captivating. There were sex symbols without really ever doing too much. Then when the remix dropped, it changed the trajectory of their sound, a bit faster with the sing rapping sound while keeping their sultry undertones. DC was the group to never have a dull moment with any of their albums or singles. They truly are a solidified group that will forever have reign regardless of the issues that they went through. The star of the group will always be Beyonce. When Beyonce finally went solo, it was very, very anticipated. Now, what's considered Beyonce's first solo song is up for grabs. Realistically, it should be classified as workout because it was made for the Austin Powers movie, but no one cares. So her first solo hit was Crazy in Love, which became a mega success. And a cult classic for the memorable music videos. From her wife beater to the red bottoms and the song instantly went number one and is considered one of the best debut singles. From her dance moves to her vocal run in the song, it oh, 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 oh. it's a staple song. In this case, it was actually expected from her considering she was a star of DC. She undoubtedly set her own standard. Beyonce has always knew how to capture audience, something both ladies had in common being top performers. Aside from their music, that's what they're known for. Both ladies put a passion on stage. With each performance, it's a show, a riveting presentation that elevates their superstar. Britney may have been known for lip singing, but her dance skills made up for it. She could put on a show with theatrics, dancing props. She's an entertainer, and you could always see she enjoyed herself on stage. You were entertained. Her shows were always elaborate and had a theme. 
And Beyonce has always been a great performer who had the skills to have the quality breath control while dancing. Her vocal strength is impeccable, which really set the standard of her being one of the best performers of all time. Her shows are always considered the highlight of the night, even when she's not doing too much. Her elegance and grace draws the crowd in, cause you know something special is going to happen. You can have Beyonce on stage in the same outfit with five different background dancers and you'll be captivated from beginning to end. She puts the energy and the ego on stage. You can hear the breath control, see her stamina, feel her energy, which makes it an amazing performance. Both ladies put time and effort for their shows and are considered great performers for their time. How many people can say that Michael Jackson the king of pop liked them as an artist. Michael gave both of them the stamp of approval, but their shows were next level. Like they're considered the celebrity celebrity because the quality of their performances and their star power. They enjoy entertaining and that's the element that also made them stand out from their counterparts. Ultimately, this level of fame and success is a dramatic jump and it didn't just affect the ladies, but also their families. Britney unfortunately didn't grow up in the most stable household. While her father was around, he did suffer severely with alcoholism and couldn't keep a job. Unlike Beyonce's father, Matthew, he didn't necessarily care about Britney's career, only how much money she would make. It was Britney's mother, Lynn, that was constantly investing in her and taking her to different places to get discovered, while also putting up for the bill. Matthew Knowles saw the vision in his daughter and quit his job for her dreams, leaving his corporate life to train his daughter for success, while Tina continued to work and accommodate for the slashing income. One cared more about the goal while the other only cared about the outcome. This stark difference allowed for a different trajectory on the road and how life would be as a star. It's a known fact that Beyonce would constantly be around her family during her tours and photo shoots, during and after Destiny's Child. Her parents were always a step away, and for Britney, it wasn't always like that. She was usually more with her team instead of her family. With success comes problems and sometimes from the ones you're supposed to be the closest to, your siblings, especially your sister if not done right, would be destined to live in the shadow of their big sister. Britney Spears' sister, as we all know, is Jamie Lynn Spears. Although Britney and her sister were seen together for award shows, Britney would visit her on the set of Zoe 101, they weren't super close considering they didn't actually grow up together. Britney is nine years Jamie Lynn Sr. So Jamie Lynn basically watched her sister grow into a pop idol instead of actually spending a lot of quality time together. Solange dealt the same fate watching Beyonce grow into a global superstar with Destiny's Child. Both ladies basically witnessed the growth of their sisters turning into superstars in their eyes. Now this is where the tale begins to drift. According to Tino Knowles, because she watched her mom in her eyes show more love to her brother, she began to feel jealous and less important growing up and didn't want the same fate for Beyonce and Solange. As Beyonce began to focus more on her career, she decided to put Beyonce and Solange in counseling. The therapy sessions allowed for Beyonce and Solange to be grow more sensitive to one another. So this would allow Solange to grow more within herself and see her own light instead of looking at Beyonce's light. Days that I devoted to on Wednesdays, I took off from work, and that was Solange's day. And she was a lot younger than Beyonce, and it was tough because she was five years older, and Beyonce was this little superstar in our in our city. And so I took them to counseling so that very early so that the counselor could help Beyonce be more sensitive to Solange because she couldn't stand her for a minute. You know, when they were little, she was five, she was all in her stuff. She was trying to hang around her and her friends and Beyonce was really irritated, but it made her more sensitive to who her sister was and what, what she had to do. And if you look at Solange's career, you could clearly see that she has her own personal style. And it doesn't feel like she's in anybody's shadow, especially her sister. To witness someone like Beyonce become this mega star, it's only normal to feel envious. Because realistically, a lot of people would. But because Tina showed Solange her own beauty and her own talent and gave her the reassurance, she never felt like she had to be jealous of her sister. Solange has her own success in her life, beginning from her first studio album, which was Solo Star, which debuted moderately well in the top 50, and has had continued success on her own, starring in multiple hit movies like Bring It On series with Hayden Panettiere, which is everybody's favorite at the series, and The Johnson's Family Vacation. Throughout the years, their relationship has never struggled because of the success or envy. Solange has her own identity. Based on the way she dresses, styles her hair, she always danced to the beat of her own drum. Solange, from a very early age, walked to the beat of her own drum. She doesn't care about anybody, what they think. She's going to do what she feels is right. She will cut her nose off to spite her face, but it's in a good way because it was what kept her 
feeling really good about herself. She just didn't care about that and it didn't affect her as much because I think she has so much support and so much positive reinforcement from her sister and from us that she just walked to the beat of her own drum and she's still like that. She's carved out her own niche and she doesn't care about what anybody else is doing. Even in musical styles, Solange is more neo, soul, and funk, and we saw that with her album, A Seat at the Table. She's talented. Her album was soft and spoke more to the soul. She got her first Grammy win from the album and has never relied on her sister's name to build her own aura or get people to actually want to listen to her. Solange can hold her own because Tina knew the detrimental effects of not having that stability within sisterhood. Their relationship, of course, has problems, but you can see that there's genuine love between them and a sense of of not just sisterhood but friendship. With Britney, it was a little different between the dynamics of her and her sister because of the age gap. Considering her sister was already this mega pop star while she was in elementary school, having that famous connection just like Solange opens the door for opportunities. And Jamie was starting to find her own footing along the way in acting. She became a Nickelodeon regular on All That and Snick on Air. She left the series once she signed a deal to start in her own show, Zoey 101. Also created by Dan Schneider, who we all know created All That. Zoey 101 was an instant success and became Nickelodeon's most watched show at the time. Jamie, who was the center of the show, also faced her own issues on set. Jamie had problems with her co-star Alexa Nicholas where she claimed that she was bullied on the set of Zoey 101. And one day when the producer told her she had to get her makeup done when in fact Britney wanted to talk to her in defense of her sister. When they spoke, Britney allegedly yelled at her behind the scenes. The Britney Spears did give me an apology. Aww. And she gave me the best apology ever. And that fully healed the wound for me. Was that personally or on the internet? On uh, So she DM'd me on Instagram. First she defended me publicly on her Instagram, saying like, you lied about Alexa Nicholas. And that was a huge moment for me because when she was yelling at me in that trailer, she was my pop idol. And then to finally see my childhood pop idol defend me was just like a full circle healing yeah. experience. For people who don't know about the trailer, Yes. Moment is that something you're willing to explain? If not, don't. Yeah, worry. no. Although I, later Britney apologized for the incident, it shows early on how protective Britney was of Jamie, no matter the circumstance. And unfortunately, that circumstance was at the expense of a 12-year-old girl. Fast forward, Zoe 101 ends following the reveal of Jamie's pregnancy at 16 years old. She decided to take a break from the limelight to raise her daughter, but ultimately losing her fandom overall. That hiatus she took took a toll on her image as she wasn't that relevant anymore after Zoe 101 and considering the show's popularity, people blamed her for the cancellation. She tried a hand in country music and Netflix shows but ultimately it wasn't as successful. The relationship between Jamie and her sister is rocky. Jamie has spoken about how she always felt like she was in Britney's shadow, which is valid. Britney was a huge star during every era of her time, but Jamie never fully recovered from not having that level of fame and reaching that peak of success again. What are you exactly trying to get out of this for yourself? I guess I just want to like, myself just feel like, feel like I'm just like worth something. Why do you feel like you're worthless? So like every time I work really hard to get something low. It's like it's not really worth it. I mean, growing up, my sister became famous, worldwide famous when I was very young. Your sister did? Yes. Right. And so, um, I'm so proud of her. I love her to death. And I don't know, I just feel like sometimes I don't really know to have anything for myself. A lot of people can blame her pregnancy for the stunt in Jamie's career, but ironically, just like Jamie had her first child at 17, Solange had her first child at 18. Solange has continued to hold relevancy and a sense of identity after her baby was born. Now granted, Jamie may have wanted a quieter life for a while because her family will always support her financially regardless, but she also grew into adulthood feeling like she wasn't good enough because Britney is her sister. Solange continued to act, sing, get married, and divorce, but has never blamed anyone for her shortcomings. And this image that Jamie portrays as a victim of being overshadowed isn't necessarily anyone's fault but her own when it comes to someone else's detriment. Because Jamie has never spoken out about Britney's conservatorship, never spoken out about her being harassed by the public, about her getting her kids taken away, her public embarrassment, her sister being labeled as crazy, nothing. Jamie ain't never said shit in defense of her sister publicly and when Britney openly speaks about her abuse, she always mentions her family. 
Never does she exclude or praise Jamie for what has happened to her over the years. Beyonce is never one to speak out or address rumors, but she will check you if you talk about her family. Fabulous once did a freestyle where he said, if you could have Beyonce, would you take Solange? That had Beyonce check him. I started watching, you know who actually made me? Um, Solange. There was a like a rap, I said something and I was, and I said, um, one of the raps, it was, it was some mixtape, some mixtape kind of freestyle or song or something. And I said, if you could have Beyonce, would you take Solange? I remember that one, yeah. And she ran down on you in the elevator. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Luckily, she didn't run down on me in the elevator. But um, she, um, the first person I saw was B. And Beyonce was like, yo, let me holler at you. And I'm like, uh -oh. Beyonce said, let me holler at you? Yeah. yeah. So I was like, yo, you know, so I went over there and, and hollered. And she was like, yo. You, yeah, and she was just telling me like they like you know that they 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 they, they rock with me. That. Okay. They rock with me, and they you know what I mean like they didn't know what that. Can, and I really didn't even think when I was saying it but like these are real people that you're. Yeah, talking about I just didn't that. really connect to it like that. You know what I mean? And you say a lot of things, and punchliney style is just to say something to be catchy and metaphoric and catch up. But I didn't you know see the deeper side of it. And Beyonce, you know, I ain't gonna share the exact conversation, but she showed me you know told me like you know these are, this is people like you know what i mean some saying something like that could personally hurt her and right. that kind of, and i say you know what i i get it and i uh say yo when i see solange that i'll um you know i'll apologize to her so um, did you see her i did i ended up seeing her <laughs> like after at, at, at soho house one day and um how long ago it was years ago okay, okay. this this even the song was years ago but yeah. i'm saying this is how i realized I that remember the song, you know yeah. <laughs> so um, she, she, I seen her, so I was like, right, let me beeline to, to Solange and apologize. And and Solange, she was, she was stiff. I'm like, hey, what's up? She was like, what up? <laughs> Why are you talking to me when you could be talking to Beyonce? And I was like, yo, I just, well, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't mean it in any malice, but I do uh, take responsibility for saying that, and I apologize. And blah, blah, blah. she was like, all right, thank cool. You. <laughs> yo. I'm and we all know the infamous elevator fight between Jay-Z and Solange. Solange was beating the mess out of Jay-Z for reasons that still aren't 100% clear to the public, but has been speculated was about infidelity. Regardless, they stand together and never apart and will always have each other's back, even within the family. What Jamie has done behind the scenes as Britney's sister regarding the conservatorship is a tale of sibling rivalry. Instead of being a union and being a shoulder to lean on as a sister and help free her sister from the havoc of the people around her, she helped and abided. She was comfortable living off of Britney's hard work and benefited from people thinking she was crazy. Not realizing what could have benefited her most was being a friend and companion for her sister, instead of being complacent in her sister's misfortunes. Everything in the dark comes to light and her treatment will bounce back harder than what we're seeing in the public. Britney's parents are really interesting individuals. They are a clear tale of parents pimping out their children for money, and the way Britney was allowed to be marketed, labeled, controlled, and milked from her birth givers is a story within itself. From the moment Britney stepped on the scene, one of the marketing tactics was sexualization, as I stated before. PG enough to be marketed towards children, but sultry enough to be a fantasy, and you really see it in this 1999 Rolling Stone shoot. The photos are innuendos to play on fantasy. It's revealing and does market her towards that crowd. Britney's parents gave her the green light and never really spoke out about the way they market her. During the 90s and 2000s, even now, a girl wearing a crop top isn't really taboo, but it's the way you put things out there that will have people questioning the motives and the way men view you and the children that look up to you. It's a level of protection that was inconsistent in Britney's career. When Destiny's Child was on the rise, Matthew and Tina always made sure to be right behind the girls. No matter who it was in the industry, during the 90s and 2000s, R. Kelly was the biggest R&B singer out. And because of his musical talents, a lot of popular artists worked with him. Record labels would ask R. Kelly to write songs for emerging artists as a way to help them break into the industry. And he made several attempts to work with Destiny's Child and Matthew and Tina rejected all of them. He did end up writing a song for them for the movie Life that appeared on the soundtrack, but he wasn't in the room with them when he wrote the song. As R. Kelly only liked to be in the studio at night and Matthew and Tina felt like it was inappropriate, they didn't want the girls close to R. Kelly or by themselves anywhere they went. Matthew was quoted saying about the protection of DC, when they went to the bathroom, Tina would go with them. They did not leave our eyes. 
They took the precautionary measures to prioritize the girls and safety above the fame. There was a good chance that if they collapsed during the 90s, when they debuted, it was gonna be a hit. Knowing the power of R. Kelly and his ability to chart, they still went against it. DC then and now never really dived into the scandalous market that wasn't controlled by them. They never pushed themselves further to what wasn't appropriate to themselves. As we all know, Britney has been taken advantage of by her parents with the conservatorship. Jamie is labeled by Britney as controlling and he began to take over her entire career. I stated earlier that Britney's dad wasn't the most active father due to his alcoholism, but once Britney got famous, he became more involved in the in and outs of her career and most importantly, her money. He became obsessed with his daughter and wouldn't let her out of his sight or have basic necessities like her phone, controlled her assets to the point she couldn't even buy shoes for herself, and dictated which pills she was taking. Financial affairs. Jamie Spears has had control over his daughter's finances since 2008 and nearly every other aspect of her life. Britney Spears has told the court the conservatorship is abusive, that she's been traumatized, forced into a psychiatric program that cost her $60,000 a month, even prevented from having a baby because she wasn't allowed to remove an IUD. Britney's public breakdown was due to the lack of privacy she was getting from the paparazzi that took a public toll on her. But here's where things got tricky. In the early 2000s, the rise of Paris Hilton and Kim Kardashian, the oldest tactic in the book before social media is not only getting spotted by the paparazzi, but calling them on yourself. A lot of celebrities will call paparazzi on themselves to get people talking about them, using the paparazzi to maintain their relevancy. Why do you guys think whenever Beyonce gets spotted, it's rare, especially back then? You don't really have a lot of pictures of Beyonce doing random things in public or getting chased by a soaring paparazzi, but there's tons of Britney. According to The Insider, Britney was just as involved in when and how she was seen. The photographers were called most of the time by her own people. Unfortunately, in Britney's case, it got out of hand to the point it helped drive her crazy. Even during and after her meltdown, where was her foundation? It's been said that Britney has had a hard time trusting people around her and never felt like she had a genuine safe space. She didn't have many friends who didn't find a way to use or betray her along the lines. She would gravitate towards different people that would end up backstabbing her again and again. Her own family seemingly weren't grounding her either if it involved messing up the money flow. Aside from putting her in rehab, what was her family really doing to help her? We don't know much about the tribulations Beyonce went through, but we do know that she was never alone. Beyonce has always toured with her family, had vacations, parties, a shoulder to cry on with her family, and even her closest friends. They would never sell a story or betray the foundation of love after all these years. Later, it's still the same. We don't know much aside from what they want the public to know and they barely get spotted. Their personal life isn't our entertainment. Even when Beyonce fired Matthew as her manager for stealing money, neither Beyonce nor Matthew ever publicly denounced one another. It was always graced with respect. Britney's family have been writing the coattails of Britney's name to anyone that will listen for a quick check, choosing outside people over your own family. And an ex who is spiteful and will go out their way to embarrass you on social media using your own children. Britney Spears' ex-husband Kevin Federline is sharing his receipts, posting videos of her arguing with their two sons, Jaden James and Sean Preston. You all need to start treating me like a woman with worth. I am a woman, okay? Be nice to me. Do you understand? Former dancer shared two old videos on Instagram Wednesday night. The first featuring Brett having a word with the boys at her home. This is my house. If I want to come in here and give you lotion for your face because it is coarse, and all you tell me, no, it's fine, it's fine. No, it's not fine. You all better start respecting me. Are we clear? Then we see Britt upset with her eldest son for not wearing shoes inside a store and disciplining him by taking away his phone. Have you lost your mind? I do care, but I'm shocked as with you. And I don't know what to do. And I'm scared of you because you're weird because you're going through puberty. I was in shock in the store when I looked down and Jaden, how are you so cool about that? Your brother being with Baron's big feet, size 13 now? Well, he's my brother. And all the more exposed his feet, your blood in an ice cream shop in, in, in Alaska weather? Don't you think that's a little odd? No. Oh uh, yeah, I think your phone should be gone. Kevin since deleted both videos. Conservatorship, apparently from day one, Jamie Spears has been appointed the monitor during every visit with Britney's children and has the power to end said visits at any point for whatever reason. 
In this highlighted section here, the conservator shall be present and shall monitor at all time petitioner's visitation and shall immediately terminate a visitation in the event that petitioner is inappropriate with the minor children. The conservator may further cancel or terminate a visitation in his discretion. And this is how Jamie has controlled Brittany for the past 13 years. From the books that were released to the inside sources and her conservatorship, they haven't been a space for Britney to feel secure, even her ex-husband Kevin, in regards to her children. Again, it doesn't seem like genuine love or care. Everyone in Britney's life has used her as a cash cow to fund their own needs. From the moment the conservatorship started, nobody has had Britney's best interests at heart. Not her dad who felt the need to control her every move. He would weaponize her own children against her if she didn't do what he said. Her mom who was supposedly initially against the conservatorship but never fought for her freedom. And her sister who feels like she's owed something because she's in Britney's shadow. Lou Taylor had no business being a part of Britney's family and estates. She shouldn't have gotten this close to Britney's assets. And the fact that this was allowed for this long, almost 15 years, is despicable. This is the clearest display of the lack of care that Britney's family had for her. They didn't care about what she was going through as long as the money was flowing. Spending weeks planning the conservatorship to blindside Britney and spending millions to maintain it. Everybody got a piece of the pie. Allowing the world to believe she was crazy in her personal life but not crazy in her work life. Continuing to be allowed to work, be put on full display to the public during X Factor and her Vegas residency for years while also carefully watching and pumping her with drugs, all while her parents continued to live off her hard work. Her voice for so long was deemed irrelevant. Nobody cared how depressed she was as long as she was able to work. She was good enough to be around people, judge and perform while everyone who worked with her said she seemed fine and she was always super nice. The one of many things that always graced the two beautiful ladies was the fact that everyone has always said that they were kind people and they've always portrayed themselves as humble and sweet, except one learned to use their voice early on while the other was punished for it. What to stand up in my family's faces and scream and cry and throw a tantrum and go back in time and do exactly what I wanted to do at those times, yeah, and might even spit in their faces. Why? Because the pain my family gave me? I'm sharing this because I want people to know I'm only human. I do feel victimized after these experiences and how can I mend this if I don't talk about it? What happened with Britney is at the expense of her vicious family, not having a stable foundation to protect her. It took her fans, her fans to garner enough attention to free her from her conservatorship. Her fans protested and rallied behind her freedom while her family did press interviews to save face as to why they never spoke up. If it wasn't for her fans, Britney would still be controlled by the very same family that claims they love her. Spending over a decade in the conservatorship, they would never have let her go. Britney, yes, did deal with a lot of problems, but it never had to get this bad. The Britney we see now isn't supposed to be this way, and I say that with the utmost respect. Her family truly ruined her. The way she looks and behaves on social media doesn't seem normal, and it's obvious she's mentally not there. It does seem like Britney is somewhat living in the past in these videos. She grew up on the attention she got and misses it, and the way she dresses isn't that far-fetched from her younger years. I think she's genuinely having fun, but the way she moves seems like she's trying to recreate the old Britney. The Britney that was happy, the Britney that was on top of the world, the Britney that was dancing and having fun. She was passionate for dancing and it will always be something that she loves, but we can't blame her knowing the history to how she got there. Britney had the undeniable potential to continue to be one of the best pop stars to ever live, and sadly that fate has been halted by the actions of the people around her. She deserves so much more from what she has dealt with and I hope she'll finally continue to live her life freely. And, and I'm not saying that Beyonce is perfect, nobody's perfect, but she's okay. She has always had her family beside her that protected her even from the man she loved. And even he has had a turnaround for the sake of his family. She was able to continue and grow as an artist and become one of the greatest performers to ever live. A fate that was destined all because she had a foundation. She's able to relish in her passion while the people around her have their own purpose and are able to be happy for her. Britney and Beyonce considerably are one and the same. This is a tale of two pop stars and a fate that was made and broken. Thank you guys for tuning in and make sure you guys like and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think down below and please show this channel some love. Thanks guys. Toodles.